Hey, good morning, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna go over where the market went this past week. We're gonna do a recap of the trade that we're in, short in ES. We're also gonna take a look at a breakdown of where we think the market's gonna go in the coming week. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. It's taken me a long time to become consistently profitable, a few years and lots of trial and error, lots of losses, lots of lessons and a lot of courses. So if you're learning on becoming a consistently profitable trader, stick with it, it's gonna take some time. You're going to have some losses. It's part of the game. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at ES right now. So this is S&P 500 futures. We traded down into this fair value gap that I had on the four hour chart uh, from 4100 to 4087. I took off most of my position at 4080 and then actually took off the rest of it and flipped long at uh, 4085. Only a small position long at 4085 right now. It's currently Thursday in the pre-market, and I, I did this yesterday at the close. I went long at the close after the good earnings on Meta. My eventual target for uh, May 8th was around this 4,000 area down here, and I took off most at uh, 4080 from an average of about 4155 short. And I had half size short, if you, ha if you saw my last video, I'll tag it in the cards up top. I said I was short average, uh, half size, average 4155 targeting down here, but as a base on the VIX, we would see about 4060 this week. We would sell off 100 points from the high on Friday. And we did exactly that. So we, we had a low of 4068 and the high uh, on Friday, if you go back to Friday, it's right here. The high uh, was about 4163. So 100 points sell off from 4163 would have been 4063 and we we're at 4068. Once we hit that, I saw that we had, you know, we were bullish on some internals. I thought that we would have a bounce. So I took off most of my short at 4080. That was an amazing trade, a lot of points taken there. But again, half size, uh, I wasn't confident that we would get the drop right away, um, but we did. So I got out of the short and I'm in long, small size, average of 4085. I'm just looking for us to trade above this recent high at about 4116 and I'm using the current low as a stop. So I'm just looking for a bounce trade. Again, my long I'm in right now is just stops below, honestly, this current low, 4061 is my stop. And then TP being just above this high uh, at about 4119. So it's it's about a you know 1.3, 1.4 to one. Again, it's, it's about quarter of my biggest size that I like to put on, just because I'm looking for a rebound and then looking to get in short, you know, anywhere from about 41.20 to 41.40 to then target the fair value gap down here at about 4,000 at some point early to mid-May. Now let's go over the reasons why I was in that short and why I kind of flipped along. Basically, we were looking at uh, the VIX, we were looking at HYG, and we were looking at DJT. So HYG, we had the divergence where we were trading lower. The reason why I got out of the short is because we had a bullish divergence. Let's take a look here. So we had a bullish divergence on smart money flow. If you take a look at, uh, let's say Thursday, April 20th to Wednesday, April 26th, uh, we were higher on HYG from Thursday, April 20th to Wednesday, April 26th. And then if you go to SPX, you'll see that Thursday, April 20th is right here. So we went from here to here. We went down about 80 points, but on Smart Money Flow, HYG, we went up slightly. So this just means that there's a bullish divergence right there, which means we're due for a bounce because Smart Money is, is really buying that sell-off. Bullish divergence there, you know, pre-market, we're up half a percent on ES. That's why I got out of the short, and then that's why I got in the long for the bounce. DJT, if you go to DJT, we consistently sold off on the transports. So this is, is looking good. Like, look how aggressive this, this sell-off is, right? So we're still looking like we're gonna continue to sell off because if you go to US 30, US 30 was making uh, higher highs, DJT was making lower highs, and then we actually dumped and swept all of these lows. But on US 30, let's see if we dumped and swept all those lows. No, we did not dump and sweep those lows down here. We are much higher, which means there's a big divergence, which means again, likely more bearish action coming in the next coming weeks, but we're just gonna get this balance because smart money flow is, is bullish in the short term. So we get the balance coming and then we go back down. Next thing I wanna look at was the fear and greed index. So fear and greed index, I was short because we bottomed out on the fear and greed index. And like we back tested in previous videos, 
if you see a put to call ratio right here, you'll see every time we made a low in the put to call ratio, it typically signified a top. And then as we trend up, we start to make lower highs and lower lows until we get to a peak in the put to call ratio. That usually signifies some sort of bottom and we make a re reversal. So we bought on the put to call ratio and now we're gonna start trending up most likely, get, getting towards that 1.0 to 1.1. But we had a massive spike here, April 24th to April 26th from 0.9 to 0.96. Anytime there's a huge jump in put to call ratio, market makers like to swing in the opposite direction to stop out some shorts, some late shorts. So that's why I was riding in this long. I think we're just gonna squeeze up a bit, push out some shorts, how this make a, a higher low on the put to call ratio, as in sell off a bit from 0.96 to 0.92, 0.94. Then again, get back in short and make lower lows and lower highs. Again, if you didn't see my last video, I went over back testing the put to call ratio and just seeing what happens here. So I'll leave in the cards up top. Watch that and let me know what you think. And then another reason was the VIX. So VIX, I said um, every time that we do sweep a low on the VIX on the weekly, the next week we push up and then ES sells off 100 points from the high in the previous week. We did this last week. We swept all the, all the lows and we pushed up. VIX actually got almost a 20 yesterday, but then already clapped back down real quick because of some internals I saw. So it looks like we're going to get that bounce. I want to cover the dollar and the yields. So on the dollar... We have been still weaker than I thought, and you know we may we may sweep this these lows still again. I, you know I'm, I I thought that we would be stronger because this dollar isn't stronger. It doesn't give me as much hope for a ton of downside in the near term because typically when we see like a sharp rise in the dollar, that's when we start to get that real sell off, aggressive sell off in the market. So since the dollar is still weak, you know there's not a whole bunch of downside I see coming in terms of like aggressive downside coming for the market in the near term. So that's why we're getting this bounce right now. Um, but yeah, I'm just holding long. It will take a look at the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ ha has been holding up better because tech earnings have been strong and the banks have been, had a lot of, have, have been having a lot of troubles. Like if you saw FRC, First Republic Bank, uh, yeah, $5. So we just got completely clapped here from this little bounce. There's still bank issues happening, but... On the NASDAQ, look, you know, it's, we've been a lot stronger. If you just take a look, we came down to 12,800 and then big earnings have been pushing us back up. You know, I think we're going to get pushed into this 1340 area. There's a fair value gap here I drew on the four hour chart. Uh, you'll see right there. So I think we're going to trade up into that 13040 area first. And, you know, if you're still bearish, that's, a, that's honestly a decent spot to go short. But I'm not getting short there yet. And I personally trade ES more than NASDAQ. And I talked about that in previous videos why. But there are these, we did spike these two fair value gaps. So honestly, the only fair value gap left on the NASDAQ is this 12,700 area. And uh, I think we'll get there at some point in May. Uh, and then push back up after and, and trade higher into June. So same thing with ES. We still have these uh, fair value gaps down at 4050, at 4020, and at 4000. So that's uh, pointing to why we think we're going to see about a 4000 low some point in early May. But again, we are, are looking for this bounce, uh, trading up between 41.30 and uh, 41.20. I think we'll get into this area before continuing lower. In terms of news, like we said, slow week of news. You know, we have some news uh, this morning at Thursday, Thursday 8.30 a.m. GDP and unemployment claims coming out at 8.30. And then Friday, not much news. We'll take a look at the news that's coming uh, for next week, Sunday when I post a Sunday video at 12 p.m. So look out for the next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. Let me know in the comments down below what you trade and what you're watching. Let me know if you were in that short as well. You know, we, we took the short from ES about down from 4170 all the way down to 4080, about 90 points profited. It's been great trading these past couple weeks. It was slow most of April. Like I didn't get much trades in. I didn't take many points most of April, but we finally got the drop that we were looking for. And it's, it's slower because the VIX is lower. So whenever the VIX is higher, you can grab a lot more points. Like in March, the VIX was much higher. March, we were at a VIX of 20 to 30 for all of March. So I took a lot of points in March. But then now, April, we've been at, you know trading at a VIX between 19 and 16. So much less points, a lot less volatility. But that's okay. You know, you, We take what we can take and uh, we make things work. 
So thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. And I'll see you Sunday at 12 p.m. for the next video.